Ultimately, a lot of people are thinking, you know, or wondering what drives the growth of cryptos. You know, what gives cryptos value? And there's all sorts of people that says, you know, it's, it's scarcity because Bitcoin, there will only ever be 21 million. Um, other people think it's hype. Other people think it's capital, etc., etc. Ult ultimately, with cryptos, especially uh, Bitcoin, it's network value. Just like if you have one person in a room with a fax machine, that fax machine has zero value because there's only one fax machine. But the moment you have two fax machines, it has value. And the moment you have another person with a fax machine, the, the value of that grows exponentially. And cryptos is like that. At the moment, there's a limited amount of people that has have cryptos and wallets and that are actually using them. And the more people that are coming on board, it's just adding extra buoyancy or network value to cryptos in general. And when you're looking, when you hear things like Coinbase saying it's having 50,000 new users per day some days, um, and it's averaging, you know, something like a quarter of a million people per year in new signups, that's a trim, like, it's absolutely unreal. And so we, we're getting this nice sort of filtering of network value, which people aren't really um, paying attention to. And also, like, Markets, whenever you look at a new asset which you're unfamiliar with or even assets that you are familiar with, every now and again you should just go back and look at the 35,000 foot view, the biggest freaking view you can find. And for me, I always go back to the demographics. The demographics underpin everything. If you want to know why we had a booming house market, booming stock market in recent years, it's all due to demographics. If you want to have a look at why the, the car industry is going to fall flat on its face over the next 10 years, 15 years, it's all due to demographics. Everything is due to demographics. And so here are the recent uh, generations. So you had the silent generation, i.e. the World War II generation where, yeah, they're called the silent generation. Uh, you then had the baby boomers. So basically everyone comes back from World War II, has babies because they haven't seen their missuses in like six months or a year, um, make loads of babies biggest demographic in, well, in history until the millennials. Uh, you then have Gen X, which is also the forgotten um, generation. And uh, then you have the millennials. So as of 2015, 2016, the millennials overtook baby boomers. So we, so I am a millennial, Rupert over there is a millennial, um, Spencer is a millennial, basically the, the, the young ones in the room. Uh, <laughs> um, we are the biggest demographic ever in human history, ever. If anyone is familiar with Harry Dent, who, who knows who Harry Dent is? He's an economist. Yeah, so he, he talks a thing about the, the demographic spending wave quite a lot, and he has a, a sort of economic research facility. And some of his stuff is pretty cool. Some isn't, though. But um, yeah, and he uses the, the, the pig and a python analogy. And basically, whenever you have a massive demographic, it, it's like a, a python eating a pig. So here's the demographic, here's the python. Basically, it causes a boom into every, any asset or industry that the demographic goes through, and then it creates a bust as the demographic passes through. So if you, um, if you look at Branson, like I think he, he must know what he's doing, but if you look at Branson, Branson has basically set up an industry or a business according to wherever the baby, baby boomers are. So he set up uh, Virgin Records, you know, back in the day when, guess what, the baby boomers were young and then baby boomers got older and then he set up other businesses and all he's done is basically create businesses for the baby boomers so he's been riding that crest so as the baby boomers are going through this python so to speak he's basically created businesses in line with you know baby boomers causing booms and i'll talk about the spent demographic spending wave because i guarantee you i guarantee you virgin will probably go or most likely go into um cruises in fact they're already doing that um, and then care homes. It won't be long before but you, you see virgin care homes coming up or virgin lawn care or whatever. Um, <laughs> but we, we then also have the Gen, Gen Z. So there's no official name for this generation yet. Um, yeah, it's too early. So it's all about demographics. And this is what's called the demographic spending wave. So we have very accurate data on what we spend money on to within a year or two. So this is actually based, so for some reason, this is US data. But in Europe, it's plus one year. I have, I have no idea why it's plus one year. But let's just look at the US. So what this means is um, the average age that we enter the workforce is 20 years old. On average, we buy our first car 
on our own, not our parents buying it. Um, when we're 25, we, the average age of marrying, uh, marrying, getting married, <laughs> is 26. First child, 28. First proper start home, 31. Baby care, 33, etc. And that's because your babies now are toddlers, and then you know terrorizing the house, and you need baby cares, and um, parents just need to get out of the house, etc. And you spend the most amount of money in your life on trading up your home when you're 41. It's because your kids are now bigger, you need more space, etc. Uh, let's skip, skip, skip a bit. Uh, so yeah, you spend more money on furniture ever in your whole life when you're 46 years old. And that's no doubt when your kids are teenagers and need more stuff. College tuition, etc. And so what you see here is between mid 40s and mid, uh, mid 50s, that's your peak spending. You earn the most amount of money mid 40s and you spend the most amount of money in your whole life mid 40s, early 50s. Um, and the other reason for that is because, as you see here, your kids start to leave home. So you then have more money to spend. And so this is why you'll, spend, you'll never spend more money in your life on a car than when you're 53 years old, on average. Home improvements, yeah, again, 53, 54, 55, you're like, sweet, extra income, let's splash out. Uh, the kids are buggered off. Life insurance, doctor's fees. I mean, this makes complete sense, right? And then, you know, you, 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 you then, retire or you start getting your pension money in etc so there's slightly more income um, and so you go traveling around the world and then you spend five years of you know messing around in queues and airports and whatnot and you're so pissed off you're like screw this just put me on a boat and booze me up and I'm happy and so that's why cruise ships are big for 70 year olds um, etc and then obviously you go, for some reason old people spend more on lawn care when you're 81 years old I, I, it's nuts. And then obviously nursing homes and there's yeah, drugs, etc. So virgin medicine, virgin nursing homes or elderly care, virgin grass. There we go. That's where virgin is most likely heading. I don't know where spaceships fit into this, but uh, the demographic spending wave is really important because from basically the age of 60, it's game over in terms of your income and spending. You spend less, you earn less from 60 onwards pretty much. And so if you look at all the industries where the baby boomers have been, and they're now well and truly buggered off, like the auto, the car industry, like the car industry boomed around the 2000s. Well, why was that? It's because baby boomers were around 50, 50s and were like, sweet, let's buy a Lambo or, or whatever. Where are the millennials right now? The millennials are over here. I'm 32. It's crazy. All year I thought I was 33 until about a week ago. Then I realized I was 32. I was like, yes, I'm a year younger. Um, so, yeah, so what's happening now? So, one of the recent, the re, why we've, I mean, over the last few years, the reason we've had a bit of a, um, a new build boom is because the millennials are just like, oh yeah, 90% mortgage, yeah, I'll just buy a random persimmon homes home or whatever. Um, and so it's because we're all buying our first starter homes. Pretty much every one of my millennial, or all of Ellie's millennial friends, are all buying homes. Where, where are we going to go? So I think when you look at this, it's, it's fair to say that we're going to have huge economic prosperity over the next 20 years, just by looking at this. We are the world's biggest demographic ever, and we are now getting into our peak earning. We're, we're now, you know, we're all young, as in millennials, we're all like most young professionals. We're starting to get, you know, good in the workforce with extra income. And I think because of the internet, etc., we're much more willing to spend it. We, we don't mind getting in debt and levering up on debt or buying things on credit cards, etc. So the spending spree that the millennials are going to do is going to be much more amplified than what the baby boomers were like, because they didn't really, not get credit, but they didn't really use credit as much as we do.